Hey, good morning, everybody. What's happening? Monday morning, nine o'clock. Morning, Rick. We had an appointment at nine o'clock, and here we are. I love that everybody's so on time. It's so brilliant. <clears throat> Uh, so a couple of quick things this morning. Um, number one, many of you are asking about some of the new security protocols that Zoom put in place uh, in the last couple of days. Uh, please note that if you have uh, if you have your own personal Zoom accounts that are the free accounts, uh, I'm pretty certain that you now have to admit people into those. So know that know that those uh, those accounts may have some additional uh, steps that you need to take before you can have. Uh, folks join you. I, I think part of the reason that we, we escape that here is because we have a, a professional account, so everyone's still able to jump uh, jump on in. But do know if you have um, some struggle getting people in, there may be a button you have to click to say add participant as they uh, as they knock on your door. So just know that that is uh, that's a thing now apparently to prevent Zoom bombing or whatever is going on with the crazy people of the planet. So. <clears throat> Uh, I, I wanted to just uh, chat with you real quick this morning about uh, about week three, right? Because uh, because the week one of something, um, you're you're kind of adapting to the change. It's kind of new. It's it's uh, it's even if it's scary, it's there's still some version of of excitement in that you're 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 trying to figure things out, right? And and, and adapt as quickly as possible. And so. Week one, you kind of get through on almost almost on adrenaline, right? And so then week two, uh, what happens in week two um, with almost anything is that you start to settle in. You start to settle into what feels like a new uh, normal. Whether it's abnormal or not, it starts to feel like a new uh, normal, right? And some of the adrenaline starts to go down and you're starting to create some structure and create a... a um, uh, a, a kind of a new system around whatever it is you're adapting to. And that brings us to week three, because believe it or not, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the morning that starts week number three. And the danger with week three is that depending on how you are settling in over week two, that has everything to do with mindset. Depending on how you're settling in, week three either has you really leaning in to what you're creating and how you're how you're reacting to the changes from a positive mindset but week three can also be if you're in a negative mindset week three is start you start to kind of lean back and step away from from what's happening right it with a negative mindset around what's happening you you, you really start to resist the change you start to resent the change um, sadness, depression, anxiety, all of those things kind of creep in. And this is the week that you have to stay really, really focused on A, being positive, and B, being active, really taking steps to do both of those things to make sure that, that the rest of your time is, is defined by the next couple of days, right? And it will be. The rest of the time that we're, we're, we're in this, in this uh, weird world will be defined by how you address this week because week four, five, six with a positive mindset really keeps you moving forward and week four, five, six with a negative mindset in week number three really keeps you moving downward. And so I want you to be really, really cautious around how you are thinking and what you are doing today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because this is a really important week. Um, to that, I wanted to I wanted to throw out something new because because hey, why not? Right, everything else is new. Let's throw out one more thing, um, and it's it's something that um, that my brother sent me last weekend. Uh, I think it was Sunday morning. He was doing something, and he described it and sent me a picture. Um, and and he at the end of that text, he said this. He said hashtag silver lining. And I haven't been able to get that out of my head um, since he did that. And so I, I, I asked him to, um, to just kind of tell you what that's about um, and what he, what he sent me, uh, because I want to I challenge you and, and throw something new out for us all to be thinking about and doing. Chris, are you on the call? I am. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. 
There we go. I know it always takes longer than you think it does. <laughs> okay, where, where are you? Let's, let's bring you there. There you are. Um, hello. So, hello. So can you tell everybody what, what that was about? What did you send me? Uh, yeah. So um, before I got into real estate, um, every couple of months on Sunday mornings, I'd make uh, crepes and jelly and chocolate chips and whipped cream and for the whole family. And uh, we'd sleep in late and we would do that. And that's not something we really do anymore because I'm doing open houses every Sunday. Uh, so, uh, you know, in spite of, and, and, um, actually even maybe because of what's been going on, um, I was able to, to do that again, uh, last Sunday and it just kind of made me, it struck me that, uh, you know, even though there's so much negative to talk about, there are these moments that pop out, these little nuggets that, uh, that really kind of make me appreciate what, you know, what we do have. I love that. And so I want to just show you, uh, this is the picture that Chris sent me of what he made that day. Um, really, really amazingly impressive, I thought. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, I mean, talk about going all out. Um, the silver lining is that there was no diabetic coma, I think, after the fact. But uh, <clears throat> so, so well, well done. Um, and then, and then you just, I think you said to me again, then just last night or, or over the week, this weekend, that, that you just did something else, right? What was your other oh. hashtag silver lining opportunity? Yeah, last night we made hobo dinner, um, which is, again, something we used to do when they were younger, which is uh, we, we, Jen and I were, my wife and I were uh, raking yesterday and picking up sticks. And when we do that, we sometimes we have a little campfire in the back and uh, we just take ground meat and vegetables and seasonings and whatnot and put it in tin foil and cook dinner on the, on a campfire in the backyard and just sit around and eat it. So we did that again for the first time in forever. Love that, love that. And Chris, Chris did send me a, a picture of that as well. Here's his family doing his um, his uh, his nope. hobo dinner last night as well. So uh, we we appreciate that. I'm not sure which of your sons gets to be a girl, but we'll, we'll have to we'll have to do rock paper scissor on that one, right? So here's the point. Thank you so much for uh, for sharing that. The um, what I want to what I want to make sure that we do uh, starting right now is talk to each other about those good things. So I want to make sure that we're, we're focused on what, what are we appreciating? Where are the gratitudes? You know, it, it, it's easy to, to look at, at, uh, at the difficult pieces of this. It, it's easy to get down, um, flip it around. What's happening that's really cool. I'll tell you one thing, I, I, for the, over the last two weeks, my hashtag silver lining, that I lost six pounds, baby. I wasn't even, I wasn't even trying to you to, uh, uh, I wasn't even trying to lose six pounds and I lost six pounds. So um, from here on out, what I want to do is I want to push out to you that if you have something awesome that you're grateful for, email that, text that to me. I, wa I want us to be sharing all of that. And so uh, we'll, do, we'll do one each morning. We'll do one in the afternoon. We'll do one throughout the day. We'll send out a blast with, with all the things that people are, are, are grateful for. So utilize this. And I, I just want to thank Chris for, for putting this, this, bug in my head. I haven't been able to get this hashtag silver lining out of my head since he sent it. Uh, and so I think that let's, let's just, let's just make it a, a movement. Let's, uh, let's embrace it. Send me all of your, all of your silver linings and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that we're sharing them with each other to keep everybody uh, positive and appreciative of all that is happening for them and with them. So thank you so much uh, for that, Chris. <clears throat> The last thing uh, I wanted to just throw out to you, again, be mindful of the calendar. We have great stuff happening today. We have, uh, we have profit share of conversations happening at 11. We have Kristen Cole, a great guest uh, at one o'clock. We have, uh, I think we have Kara Golden uh, talking about uh, inspections at two o'clock today and how, how or, or um, it's two or three, I can't remember which, um, uh, how inspections have kind of shifted and whatnot. So get all that information, plug into what's important to you. I wanna finish our time together uh, before we move to Marty Miller, however, with, uh, with a, a quick video, it's like a five minute video um, from Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek is an author and speaker talking to his team about change and the opportunity and how we need to be grateful for, uh, for that change, right? And so, uh, so take, some, take a moment to, uh, to listen to Simon Sinek. Uh, if you get bored with what Simon's saying, pay attention to the guy in the red on the upper right hand um, corner of the screen because he's kind of interesting to watch as well. <clears throat> Simon Sinek.
I just did a, 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 um, a web a, a, a podcast interview with some folks in Australia and they were pushing me very hard to try and explain how the infinite mindset helps in times like these. And I had a thought on that call that I wanted to share with everybody, which is these are not unprecedented times. <clears throat> there are many cases, lists of cases where change or uh, something unexpected has put many companies out of business and made other companies come out stronger and reinvent themselves. The invention of the internet put many, many companies out of business. The ones who could not reinvent their companies for the internet age, but rather doubled down on the old way they did business. Um, every video store is out of business because, uh, because of streaming and they couldn't reinvent themselves. When Starbucks moved into neighborhoods, many, many companies went out of business. Many coffee shops went out of business, not because of Starbucks, but because they refused to change the way they did business. They still had an old ripped up couch when you had a better product. Uber is putting taxi companies out of business, not because of Uber, it's because the taxis refuse to change. This is not unprecedented. The fact that something new and th this more sudden, absolutely. More shocking, absolutely, without a doubt. But this is not unprecedented in the business world. And so for us to say, not how do we do what we're doing, but rather how will we do what we're doing in a different world? And the world is different. And, uh, and, 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 I, and the thing that I said on, on, on this interview was, it's the companies that have been investing in will and having, and having an infinite, infinite mindset for a long time that will come out of this stronger because they're prepared. Some of the, many of them were saving money as opposed to giving out huge fat bonuses to everybody and spending all the money. And the will of the people is high to figure out a way through it. The ones that are struggling the most are the ones that spent all their money, saved nothing, appeased Wall Street, um, and the will of the people is low that people are in survival mode rather than reinvention mode. It's the companies that with an infinite mindset that are re in reinvention mode, it's the companies with a finite mindset that are in survival mode, regardless of how much money they have. It's the mindset. How are we gonna get through this versus how are we gonna change to get through this? So I feel so optimistic because we're thinking about the future. We're in a dark tunnel, but there's a light over there. I don't know how far away that light is, but I can see it. But we're in darkness now, but when we come out of there, we will have a better train a different train. We will be a completely different business. Some of us will have different jobs by the time we get out of this. And that's our opportunity. The opportunity is what will we be, not how do we to preserve what we had. That's an infinite mindset. And I'm so proud of this team because my attitude is this, not theoretically, but because I'm watching a team go through it right now. I'm watching people reinvent themselves. I'm watching people think about their jobs differently. I'm watching people think, how can I contribute in a new way? I'm watching people say, what could we be? How will we bring our message to people in a different way, in new ways? That will last forever, by the way, not just for now. So proud of you guys, love you guys. Because we are a living example of the stuff that I'm talking about out loud. I get to say, we are doing this. We're not allowing Uber to put us out of business. We're not allowing Starbucks to put us out of business. We're not allowing the internet to put us out of business. We'll reinvent ourselves. This is not unprecedented. This has happened many, many, many times in business. This one's just a little more sudden. And by different jobs, you don't mean different jobs out of this company, but reinvent yourself within this company. That is the opportunity. So I know a company, it's a fine dining restaurant in New York City. He's figured out a way to become a delivery company. All of his people have kept their jobs because they have different jobs now. But if you think you're gonna do the same job and you're waiting, like if you're a public speaker who was waiting for this to get through so you can go stand on a stage, I got some bad news. That, that ship has sailed. We have to be a normal company now where we have to market ourselves and, and develop product. This is a huge wake up call for us. We have, we, we had the luxury of being lazy. And I don't mean that in a bad way. There was no reason to reinvent when, when we're drinking from a fire hose. 
but now the opportunity is magical. I'm thinking, how do I put myself out there without a stage? This is entirely new for me as well. This is entirely new for me. But I'm not worried about what I do. I'm worried about why I do it. And I will find a job that helps me do that. I'll make a job that helps me do that. And I expect the same of everyone. And here's the best thing, you don't have to do it alone. We've got each other's backs, we'll help each other. Some of it'll be easy, some of it'll be unbelievably difficult. This is a very, very magical team. We're streamlined. Good? All right, I gotta go to the doctor. Thank you, Simon. All right, I love you guys. All righty, thank you, Simon Sinek. <clears throat> I feel really bad for the, for the guy who came in 10 seconds before he was finished. I think the whole magical team thing maybe excluded that one guy. I think he might be finding a new job outside of the company because he missed that call, right? So here's, here's, the, uh, here's the point as we, as we come to a close. Change is not good or bad, right? And for, and for some of us, when you're wired to resist change, change feels bad until it doesn't feel bad. And what, I, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm encouraging you to do is to take that mindset, work with that infinite mindset like Simon talks about, understand that change is just change. The only thing constant in life or in business is change. And so embrace it, be, be grateful for it, hashtag silver lining it, right? Recognize that this is, this is all about opportunity. And the way you approach finding that opportunity starts right here. And like Simon said to his team, I will say to you, you don't have to do it alone, right? We have each other, let's utilize each other, let's, let's, let's unite and teamify and make sure that, that, that nobody gets left behind so that we're all stronger and all more positive and all making more money and all doing more good when this is all over than we did going in. Guys, have a great day. I'm gonna pass it over to Adonis to kick off the uh, day six of your Marty Miller challenge. Have a lovely one. Awesome, awesome. This is a good morning. I feel like it's gonna be a good week. Anybody else feel like that? Awesome, awesome. So. Uh, Marty Miller is going to take us through custom tags with our contacts because as you start to get more and more contacts, you want to label them as such so they're easier to find. He's also going to show us some smart views. So stay tuned for Marty Miller. Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 3.0 Day 6. So this is our second day talking about contacts, and this is our second uh, applet or sub-menu icon here, contacts. So today we're going to talk about uh, custom tags, we're going to talk about filters, and we're going to talk about smart views. So as you grow your database, obviously you're going to get more and more people in the database, and Honestly, it can get a little overwhelming if you're not doing things like adding custom tags so that later you can filter that database and see specific groups or classifications of people that you want to work with. So in order to add a custom tag, the first thing we need to do is go into our settings and we're going to go over to command settings and then we're going to choose contacts and custom tags. So you have the ability here, these have been loading kind of slow this morning, so they may or may not pop up, but you do have the ability to go through here and click on this create new tag button. So here you can get an example of some of the tags that I have, I have about 68 of those. Um, ignore this, I'm not sure why it's saying I have 912,000 contacts uh, with that tag, obviously I don't. And yet, um, if you want to create a tag, think about groups of people that you want to start classifying. So. Um, they could be tagged based upon, right, and here I've got people that I met at Megacamp or that they are an associate or an allied resource, they're a KW Platinum agent, I have people that are in my coaching program, uh, past clients from 2018. The sky's the limit. I have tags in here based upon where people are, so whether they're in Katy or Cyprus. Um, I also teach across the country, so anytime I teach, 
I get a lot of agents contact information and business cards. I put those people in my database to follow up with later. I'll tag those by things like Tulsa, Oklahoma or San Antonio, Texas or um, Alabaster, Alabama, places like that that I've been recently that I've been teaching. So all these are just some opportunities that you can come in and put in. So to add an actual custom tag, once you say, yep, I want to group this person by this tag, all you have to do is create new tag and then you're going to name the tag. So let's just put in test tag and I can choose a color for that tag as well. So let's say I want it to be kind of a standout, a little darker there. Once I click on create, that is now a tag that I have the ability to utilize with my contacts moving forward. So let's go back into contacts and we'll just pull up one of our test contacts here. So let's grab double A seller and I'll show you how you add that custom tag. So once you have the contact record open, essentially you're just going to click on the pencil here to edit the tag or edit the contact, excuse me, and then you can see tags down here. I can click in this box and it'll give me a list of all of the tags that I have created. And sometimes you have to scroll down to find which one you want to use, right? So I can get to, we called it test tag. I could do that by just scrolling down and here you see test tag. I'm not sure why that color didn't take, but that's okay. I'm just going to click on test tag. Um, I also have the ability to actually type in this box. So if I start typing in test, you'll see it's going to pop up that test tag there. Also, from the contact record, I have the ability to create a custom tag instead of having to go through the settings menu. And if I actually had a contact record up and I wanted to create a tag for someone, I could create it right here from the actual contact record. Uh, one thing I will say, just be careful about your custom tags. You don't want to have, um, let's say, um, I might have a tag for a lender and then I might have a tag for a mortgage person or mortgage expert or whatever. Um, if I later, and I'll show you how to filter here in a second, if I later were to filter for all of my uh, lenders, I would miss anyone I had tagged as mortgage expert. And if I'm filtering for mortgage experts, I might miss everyone that I had put in as lender. Um, so, you know, I've, I've had people create tags for like potential lead, potential buyer, and then future buyer, and then possible buyer, and all of a sudden, right, they're trying to filter their contacts and they're missing people because they tag them multiple different ways. So my, I think the best practice is if you're going to create a tag, look through the ones that you already have and make sure you don't have a tag that's already very similar to that. And if you do have one that's similar, then use the same tag, be consistent throughout your entire process. All right. So once we're back in the full contact list, the importance of using tags becomes apparent when we start looking at filters. And I'm going to show you some additional filters as well. Once I click on filters, the filter screen pops up here from the left hand side and I have a variety of different methods I can filter my database by. The first ones here at the top, Based upon the stage, whether you've captured their information, whether you've connected with them, or whether you've actually qualified them, and obviously you can do that within the contact record. System tag. So let me say I want to look at all of the system tags that are available here, right? So you can see these are created by KW already stock in your system. So if I wanted to look at everybody in my database, let's just say that was a KW agent. I could do that and I could come down and click on apply. And all of a sudden, my database goes from 2786 to 529. So I have 529 KW agents in my database. You can see that this filter is active. So I'm only going to see the ones with this filter. I can click on the X and it removes the filter and takes me back to my entire list of contacts as well. So I can click on filters again. On the right hand side, you can see here we have our custom tags. So I can go through and Let's say I wanted to find somebody that lived, maybe I have a new listing going live in Katy, and I want to pull everybody up from my database that I've tagged in Katy. So I could click on that, and then I could click on down here at the bottom, apply, and it's going to pull up the people that I have tagged in Katy right now. All right, so I can cancel that filter, and let's go back. Let's get rid of that custom tag. I could go through and look at company. Maybe I have um, a lot of people from a particular company that I want to send out an invite for uh, an event that I'm doing nearby where they work. That could be something we'd use company for. Um, created, so longer than. So I want to know someone that's in my database that's been in my database for more than, you know, three months, six months, 12 months. 
I could also do, I want to find people that have been created within my database within the last blank. So this is important too, if you're running Facebook ads, you want to see the contacts that have come in within the last one or two days. I could do that within last one day and click on apply. It would only show me the people that have been put into my database within the last day. So these are all people that I've put into my database within the last day. I can go back to filters and cancel that out. Okay, you also have lead source. So I can come through here and filter by lead source. I can filter by modified within the last. So did I make any changes? Have I up and dated anything? Have I made any, right? So <clears throat> if I longer than, so modified longer than let's say 10 days, that's basically going to then show me anyone that has had a modification or hasn't been modified, right? That's why it's such a big list, 2485 there. Um, I also have the ability to do last contacted, last visited, date of birth, right? So I wanted to see who's who's got birthdays within the next three days so I can plan to make some calls. We have the birthday smart plan and I highly recommend that. And yet if you have people in your database, I could just say, hey, um, I think Austin's birthday is today. And then Jennifer and Nancy and my boy Philip and my boy Rich from KW Platinum, right, all have birthdays coming up within the next three days. So that's another example of a filter that you could create. Uh, primary phone, you've got primary email. Does the contact have a neighborhood assigned to them or not? So that's always a good one. Uh, who's the ownership, right? So if you're on a team, we're working on some of those permissions still coming down the pipe. And then you have ownership type as well. So let's say I wanted to create a smart view and say I'm really working on upping my database score by adding addresses and assigning neighborhoods. I could come in here and say, okay, I wanna look at all of my contacts that do not have a neighborhood. Okay, but I want to use this view frequently. Maybe this is something that I time block for the first 30 minutes of any of my lead generation time or the last 30 minutes of my lead gen time. I'm gonna go in and work on addresses and neighborhoods. So I wanna see this filtered view often. We call that a smart view. It's a view that you wanna filter your contacts by and then be able to pull back up. Um, actually, you can see your smart views if you come over here, this is the original smart view, the kind of the OG smart view, if you will. It's all of your contacts. If you click down here, you can see, okay, here is a smart view that I set up that is just my sphere. Here's a smart view that I set up personally for incoming leads. So if I click on that, you'll see what the filter is. The filter is actually people that have been created within the last two days, contacts or, or database entries created within the last two days. So, and then the last one here, you can see that there are several that Kelly has actually already put in. So we were doing the neighborhood ones. It shows contacts that do not have any neighborhoods associated. That was the exact smart view that we were looking at creating and Kelly's actually already created for us. So maybe I want to create a filter for, um, again, we talked about the birthday smart plan. So I could say, hey, um, I want to do a birthday within the next, I don't know, five days. Okay, so if I didn't want to put all of my database on the smart plan, I could just say, all right, here's all the people in my database that have a birthday within the next five days. That way I can make sure that I give them a call or make a social post or uh, actually send a birth birthday card, etc. So these are all the abilities that you have for filtering the lead. And then once you get that, so let's do this. I still haven't actually saved a smart view. Let me say, I want a smart view. I take listings often in Katy, Texas. So I want Katy, Texas, and I want buyers. Okay, so I want all of my buyers that are in Katy, Texas. And I don't know if this is gonna filter anyone because I don't think that I have anyone applied to this. But if I clicked on apply, it would show any of the buyers that I have put in my database that were also in Katy, Texas. So it's gonna take a little time to load. But if that was the actual filter that I wanted to save, I would just come down here to the bottom and click on save smart view. It's gonna say, what do you want that smart view to be called? And I could just say, I want it to be called Katie Byers. Okay, so I would click on save smart view. And there you would see that it's basically gonna come up with people that have system tag of buyer and that are also in Katie, Texas. So got 18 people in that setup right now. And actually it looks like 
now that I'm looking at it, and this may be a glitch, we'll run it up the chain and see, but it appears that this is either someone that has buyer or has Katie, but not necessarily both. So I think that is something that we're working on. So it doesn't look like I can do both a system tag and a custom tag. So let's just say I want everybody in my database that has Katie Texas, and I'll save that as a smart view. So I'll click on save smart view. That will be Katie Farm, maybe. We'll call it that one. All right, and let's say that Katie Buyer smart view we didn't like. We could click on this drop down box here to see all of our smart views. We can click on manage smart views. And that Katie Buyer one, that one didn't work. So let's come down here. We're going to click on the Katie Buyer. And actually, let's click on all the, there we go. Now I can see the trash can. I'm going to get rid of that smart view. It says delete smart view. And I say yes. And now that smart view is no longer in my list of actual smart views. So I click on apply. And now you have the ability basically to go back into smart views. If I wanted to see all my people from Katie, I now have a new smart view called Katie Farm. All right. So that's basically how we create a custom tag, how we can utilize custom tags and or system tags when we are creating a contact or editing a contact. And then also the ability to use one of these multiple filters to kind of take our massive database and shrink it down to a more manageable, workable size. And then you've also seen a smart view for a filter that you really like and you want to continue to use. That's it for today, guys. I hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. And as always, I'll look forward to speaking with you in the morning. Thanks. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Tomorrow, Marty's going to talk more about context because everything starts with context. So you're going to learn how to search for um, different ways, like via email or last name, first name, so you can just get to the contact you're looking for. Also, maybe you paid for some ads on Facebook. Maybe you just want to see your leads. So we're going to talk about that kind of stuff tomorrow. But that's it for today. I hope you make it a great one. Go make somebody smile. Go make somebody laugh. Go impact someone positively. Have a nice day. Thank you.